Hello, my name is Jim Kaufman, and I'd like to welcome you back to episode number two of the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay Presents Habitats. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about winter habitat for wildlife. Not just why winter habitat is important, but what you can do on your property to improve it for wildlife during the winter. So what do wildlife species do in the winter? Some hibernate, others migrate, and others have developed physiological adaptations that allow them to stay right here within our Chesapeake Bay watershed during the winter. And for our wildlife species that stay here during the winter, they need to find food and cover. So it's really important to provide winter wildlife habitat. And we're standing here in a warm season grass field um, with a lot of stalky, thick stemmed herbaceous vegetation. And some of our wildlife species utilize this grassland and early successional habitat in the wintertime. So today we're gonna to talk about grassland habitats and the wildlife that inhabit grassland habitats. We're also gonna talk about what we call scrub shrub habitats. We're gonna talk about fence row habitats and of course forests. So come join us as we chat about winter wildlife habitat. When we look at or talk about upland habitat, or early successional or grassland habitat. Um, we are typically managing that habitat for springtime um, and for grassland nesting songbirds and other wildlife species that rely on this type of habitat for nesting. But there are a number of wildlife species, uh, particularly songbirds and some small mammals that reside here all throughout the winter and also utilize these warm season and native grassland uh, habitat types during the winter. So if you look behind me here, you can see a fairly diverse stand of early successional habitat. Um, there are some grasses uh, interspersed throughout this uh, woody stemmed vegetation. Um, and you can see a number of different warm season grass species. Um, we have some herbaceous species and even some woody species uh, like these raspberries here. If you look here, you can see what's known as a vole trail or a vole run. Uh, a vole is a small microtene rodent um, that occupies many grassland, grassland and early successional habitats throughout the Chesapeake Bay watershed. Uh, they're active through most of the winter um, and a good sign of seeing voles are these runs or trails that they create um, between their burrows and between feeding areas. Here we have what I believe to be a kestrel nest box um, it's a wooden structure that has been installed here to provide a uh, place for kestrels to nest um, and also rear young and get out of the wind and get out of the cold and the elements. A lot of different species will use these next nest boxes. Um, we have cavity nesters, a couple birds of prey, some songbirds, um, and, and even some owls. Uh, things like flying squirrels will also use these boxes. So um, this would be a great example of something that you could install on your property at home to provide some habitat for wildlife in winter. Right here, uh, we found something very interesting. Uh, there are remnants of what are known as owl pellets. Um, and these are remnants of prey items that were consumed by owls. Um, rather than pass the hair and bones through their digestive system, they're actually regurgitating um, the, the excess parts of these animals that they're not digesting or not extracting nutrients from. Um, and this is a, a great example. That means there are owls here that are using this habitat Again, we have a lot of nice native warm season grasses, um, other coarse stalky vegetation that's standing upright in the winter to provide habitat for small mammals, which are the primary prey items of these owl species. One of the groups that often gets overlooked is insects. While we're all familiar with insects, there are billions of them around us every day, we often don't consider them in our everyday management activities. Um, we're looking at an example here of a very important pollinator species, a species that a number of different insects use, and it's a species that's very important to one insect in particular. This is a common milkweed. Um, this is a, one of the host plants for the monarch butterfly, uh, which is declining at unprecedented rates. So us and other organizations are working to promote and encourage uh, milkweed on the landscape. Um, and while we're familiar with milkweed and familiar with its benefits in the spring, um, we need to remember, it's important to remember that this stalky vegetation that's left here over the winter also provides a lot of habitat for insects that overwinter here in our uh, farms and forests.
when we look at grasslands and other early successional habitats, it's often hard to tell if they're going to provide good wildlife habitat. But one way to see if the habitat that you're managing on your property is good for the wildlife species that utilize grasslands is you want to look at it from their point of view. So get down as close as you can to the ground and look through and look how much vegetation is here, how much cover. We have food sources and we have places to be able to get out of the elements for wildlife species in the winter. So you might be asking yourself, what can I do as a landowner to provide winter habitat for wildlife on my property? Well, when we're talking about grassland or early successional habitat, one of the best ways or easiest ways to do that is reduce your mowing during the summertime and then seed with native grassless, native species in order to provide this habitat during the winter. Another important winter habitat type for wildlife are fence rows, especially here in the agricultural landscape. Uh, throughout the, the Bay watershed, we have a lot of farms, obviously, and farm fields, areas that have been cleared for agriculture. Um, and the edges of those fields or areas between fields, we often call fence rows. And here behind me, you can see a great example of a fence row that provides good quality wildlife habitat. This is a great example of a nice, thick fence row that is providing good quality wildlife habitat. Um, it has a lot of early successional woody stemmed vegetation. Um, sometimes we call this a scrub shrub wetland or a scrub shrub upland habitat. And that's where the vegetation is dominated primarily by shrub species. A very common native and beneficial shrub species that we see in fence rows, especially in wetter habitats, are our shrub dogwoods. We have a number of shrub dogwoods throughout the Chesapeake region. Uh, they include red osier dogwoods, silky dogwoods, gray dogwoods, and some others. And you can see here, this is a low-lying fence row area here that has some really good scrub shrub habitat dominated primarily um, by these dogwood shrubs but it also contains a lot of other good, beneficial, uh, early successional woody species. Things like rubus, or raspberries and blackberries. Um, there are a number of sumacs over there. Um, I saw some smilax or the uh, greenbrier throughout, um, and a couple other small tree and shrub species. way to test if you have good early successional and scrub shrub habitat on your property is to walk through it. If it's difficult to walk through and you get cut up by thorns, then you know you're doing a good job and you got good wildlife habitat. We often get asked by landowners um, and folks that are interested in managing their habitat for wildlife if conifers, evergreens, pine trees, or, fir or firs are good to plant for wildlife in winter. And the answer is yes, if they are planted correctly and if it's the right species. Um, if you look behind me here, a fence row, uh, again, between two ag fields um, that contains an evergreen conifer species. Um, you can see that the needles stay green all winter, provide some cover for wildlife. Um, so this fence row is working well, but it could be better. Unfortunately, this is just one individual row of trees. And if you're looking to create really good travel corridors or winter thermal cover for wildlife on your property, you can plant conifers and evergreens like this, but I would recommend to do at least three rows of those trees. That way, if there are significant or strong cold winds in the winter time, wildlife can get in the interior of that fence row and they're better protected from the wind. Honestly, there isn't much wind protection here in a single row of conifers like this. I mean, we also would encourage you to plant native. Select native uh, pine tree or conifer or fir or spruce species. Here we're looking at another great example of what a good early successional fence row habitat looks like at providing a lot of good cover for wildlife in winter. You see we have some mature trees throughout what was probably a historic fence row. 
and this landowner has allowed that fence row to expand, which is wonderful. Again, um, we want to set aside areas where we're growing crops, using for agriculture and food production, but yet these areas in between that are marginal can create excellent habitat for wildlife in the winter. You can see a lot of young oaks that are growing throughout here. You can see they hold on to their leaves pretty well throughout the winter, again, providing cover, um, and not just cover, but a food source. Um, a lot of our, our songbird species that stick around here in the wintertime and don't migrate, they're feeding on seeds and leftover berries, but there's also a lot of bird species that stay here that also feed on insects throughout the winter. The insects might not be active, but there are adults and there are larvae and eggs that overwinter, especially on oaks. There's a lot of insect species that use oaks, but a lot of insect species that are in this herbaceous layer um, and in some of the younger woody vegetation. So those insects that are dormant throughout the winter, um, there's a ton of them in here and our species that stick around in the wintertime rely on them uh, for food. So not only is this fence row providing good cover for wildlife in the winter, it's also providing food for a lot of our, our wintering songbirds. If you're a farmer or an agricultural landowner, there are ways to provide habitat and resources for wildlife species on your property in the wintertime, even on the ag landscape. Uh, we're standing here uh, within a, a sunflower seed or a sunflower field that was planted sometime this spring. The sunflowers bloomed, went to seed, and this landowner has decided not to harvest them and not to mow them in the wintertime. And this is something great that provides a lot of, again, not only habitat and cover for wildlife, um, but a nice food source. Well, that's all for our installment of Habitats today. I want to thank you for joining us. Hope you learned something. I'm Jim Kaufman with the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay, and we'll see you on the next episode of Habitats, where we chat about habitat. Thank you.